In my previous video, I set up two Raspberry Pis and I sent data between the two Raspberry Pis uh, over an infrared link. So this is the same circuit. I've only got one Raspberry Pi this time. Uh, and I've got a, the, a receiver here, an infrared receiver and an infrared LED to transmit. So it's, it's basically the same circuit as in the, the last uh, video. Um, although I've I've removed a resistor from in front of the infrared uh, diode in order to get a, a longer range. So these infrared diodes, they seem to vary in specification from one to the next quite, quite radically. Uh, so in order to, to tune for the best range for whichever diode you've got, it's, it's best to experiment and uh, see how much voltage is across the diode and uh, tune to, to get the best um, value for whichever one you've got. So I'm still using the same receiver as in the last video uh, and I've got a 545 timer to drive the 38 kilohertz um, that this LED needs to drive at in order for the receiver to receive information. But I won't be actually transmitting from this LED to this receiver, I'll be transmitting from this uh, LED to a television or it could be a set top box or a hi-fi, you know, as, as anything with a standard remote control like, like this kind of remote control. Uh, so I'll be using the receiver here to record from a remote control uh, and then after I've recorded some of the some of the actual key presses such as volume up, volume down, power on and off, um, I'll, I'll then take those codes and I'll play them back through this LED from the Raspberry Pi using the Python script and I'll control the TV and I'll, I'll be able to um, change the volume, change the channels. So I've added a couple of extra scripts. So if I look at what's in the directory, um, I've added these two extra scripts uh, right in the middle here. Um, so the RX one, uh, that will be used to actually record information from the remote control. Uh, and then the TX one, after I've recorded the information, will be used to play back the information to the television uh, and control the television. So I'll demonstrate here how to record um, actual key presses on the remote control uh, and get the information which will be used uh, to play back to the television. So using the PI, PI IR RX data script, which is just a Python script, uh, you start it off and it starts waiting for data. Now, if I bring in a, in the remote control, I point it at the infrared receiver and start press, pushing the buttons. Uh, this is getting now the... Um, values which can be used to play back. So on the display here, um, this, this bit of information is just tabulated so it's easier for me to do debugging and comparisons, but this, inf this information at the top, this is what we'll take. Uh, and then we'll play it back using the, the transmitter uh, code. So if I come out of this, and I've copied that data and I enter the script, transmitting data and it just takes one argument which is the uh, data which was recorded and if you hit enter that then plays the data back so I'll go over to TV uh, and I'll use what's in the examples um, directory so in the examples directory I've recorded a, a load of things uh, for my television and my Humax satellite receiver uh, for controlling them and what I'll do is I'll, I'll change the volume level, change the source maybe and turn on and off the TV. So I'm at my Samsung TV. I've got my Raspberry Pi here with the infrared transmitter there and the TV's receiver is there. You can actually, I've actually used this across the room. I, I've got a room which is about 20 feet wide and um, it, it works okay at 20 feet. So these, um, they should work at the same kind of range as a normal TV remote control. Uh, but if you get like the really powerful LEDs, then you know I guess it, it can get you know a really good good range. Um, so I've got in the buffer just a few a uh, few of the controls. This is in the examples directory. So if I run the volume up control, you see the volume up on the TV. Uh, then there's the volume down control. Uh, and also, I can power the TV off. 
and if I just hit up and hit enter again it should the TV should come back on the TV takes a, a few seconds for it to um, power back on but um, in a second the, the display should come back on again and so there it is so you can these are just some examples which I've used but you can record any any of the commands and play them back some some controls may be then on 38 kilohertz, so maybe some some TVs may not work and stuff. But I've used it on my Humac satellite receiver; it works on that, and I've used it on my TV, uh, and also the other control which, which I had earlier in the video. Uh, that's for a, a different TV as well, which isn't the Samsung TV. So this is the transmitting circuit, and it's just a standard 555 timer oscillator, uh, and it oscillates at 38 kilohertz. Uh, so the there's a variable resistor in here which you can adjust to get it to 38 kilohertz because it's got to be very very much on 38 kilohertz to, to oscillate into actually transmit and, and receive uh, and then the 38 kilohertz comes around here into a transistor which the raspberry pi switches on and off uh, so that's how it gets it's transmitting high and low levels so high levels when it's transmitting uh, and the low levels when the LED is switched off and the infrared LED is just there. And then the receiving circuit is the VS1838B uh, and this is just uh, the circuit which is off of the data sheet. Uh, so the data sheet seems to suggest having a 100 ohm resistor on the power end line uh, and the output is pulled up through a 100k resistor uh, and then this is the resistor which I've just put in line with the GPIO pin just to protect the uh, Raspberry Pi and the, the device, make sure there's not, not too much current flowing between the two. So I'll go through the source code uh, of the two extra scripts which I've added. Uh, and these have been actually, I started off by taking a copy of the existing ones, but I had to change them quite a bit because it actually records and plays back in a completely different way to the other ones, uh, the other scripts which I've wrote, written. Um, at the top, I still define the same pins for the transmitting and receiving. Uh, and these uh, values are still the same in the constants um, for defining some of the timings and the levels. And setting up the GPI pins still the same. Uh, and initializing data, there's, uh, there's less uh, data to be initialized. So in, in the previous ones, um, I was doing the recording on levels and the lengths of the levels uh, that were, were being seen on the GPI pin. But this is... Uh, in order to actually record the remote control stuff, it, I'm having to record it slightly differently, and I'm just recording the period lengths. So um, when, it, when it goes high, I record how long it goes high for. When it goes low, I record how long it goes low for. I just get a recorded stream of those. So this is uh, the text where it says it's waiting for data, and it goes into an infinite loop, and it just sits there receiving data, and then you can press all the keys and take, out, take the data from the key presses. Uh, and st store those into the, into script files. Um, so here I get the period, and I did measure the period between the last time I, uh, the level changed and this time uh, that it's coming around the loop. And I read the GPIO level. And I decide if the level's changed or not, uh, and if it has, um, and it's it's above the rejecting length so if it's if it's too short it'll just ignore it I, like some kind of noise uh, and again I, I um, at the very start you have to you have to decide when it's starting communicating because this is when we're going to start recording data uh, and after that is this is a lot lot simpler than the code so now it just records the period for how long it was um, high or low for and the first period it records is always going to be a high period because uh, without any transmission, it's, going to, it's, lo it's low. So by default, it's low. So the first period you record, it'll be high. And then the next period will be how long it's low for and high and low. So all you, all you need to do is um, record how long it was uh, in those states for. And it goes, it just uh, goes through and records those high and low periods until, it, until the, the um, low period it exceeds how long the end of a transmission is and then it then it comes out and it prints out the data which it's received and it goes through each of the periods and prints them out in a floating point fashion uh, and that's because when i come back in to replay it 
we'll just be using sleep statements to generate the, the periods uh, which are required. Uh, so there's no actually manipulation of data required. It just takes a series of periods for the high and low levels and it can just play those straight back. Uh, so the code is actually a lot simpler than, than the previous code which I've been explaining. Uh, so it com comes through. So this, when it writes out here, this is in the format um, which is is um, used to actually record and put into script files. And then this is this is just like a debugging format where I'm laying out and I'm I'm counting the the um, levels, uh, and I'm also showing the, the whether it's a high or low level, um, showing the floating point level, and I'm tabulating it in a way that I can then like compare. Uh, what was recorded with what's being played back it makes it a lot easier that, that way uh, and, and that's basically it. just at the end um, after it's recorded that data and it's about to go into the new data again it resets the data values back to zero so they can record the next level the next um, event and then the code for retransmitting the data again the constants are the same for taking the argument at the top and um, GPO pins the same uh, and then it's again a simpler just level and end period definitions set up the GPO pins exactly the same as in the previous code um, and then if no arguments given I just give an example I just print out an example and display as to how, how the commands used it just takes an argument uh, and it comes through and it, it goes through each of the so it splits the data that it gets in the argument into their component floating point numbers like here's like it splits them into individual floating point numbers so that then I can take this in the loop and I can iterate round um, through the loop so I'm adding it to here to data values in in a floating point form so it's easy to iterate through and just play back the floating point form uh, I just summarize that I'm sending the data and I, sum, I just, this, this bit just goes through a loop and displays on the display. I do that separately from sending back the data because if I display the data whilst I'm sending it back, it, it messes up the periods for, for which the high lo low levels are. So the actual transmitting of data is a separate thing here. So it's the same same loop, but rather than printing on the display, it's actually sending it back. It sets the, the, the output pin to the, the level high or low. It sw swaps for the next time to be an opposite level and then it just waits it just does a sleep and it it passes the data directly into the sleep command so the no no manipulation of the data or anything it just passes that in and it keeps going around this loop and it sets high and low levels toggles between high and low levels and just sleeps for the period required for that high or low level and it's as simple as that so it's a, it's a much simpler than the data trans transmitting code in the previous video that I had um, but uh, that's all that's required for this uh, this remote control recording and, and replaying.